Welcome to Nationals Park. Not the thing we wanted to see at 7 o'clock with Lucas Giolito getting ready to make his major league debut and in fact facing Matt Harvey of the Mets. But rain has blown in to southeast. We shall sit and wait for a while. I tell you the skies really look scary off to the north and then over to the east. So evidently it could be worse than what we're getting right now. But hopefully it'll blow through and there's a ball game to be played and there's a debut to be made. Your thoughts on what Lucas Giolito might be going through right now because he's obviously amped up for this and now there's a delay. Well there are reports that he got here way early today and you can understand why and now you have to sit around and wait a little bit longer. He'll be fine but I'm sure he's chomping at the bit to get out there. This storm's almost blowing through. I can see sun over our shoulder right now. So we should be getting underway relatively shortly. All right. How about some Lucas Giolito video from his days this year at Double A Harrisburg? And we're going to see a good fastball. We're going to see a big hook. FP and that's a deadly combination for a kid his age. Well he's six six he's throwing downhill so the 97 98 if you can believe it actually plays up from that velocity because he's so close to he's throwing downhill the changeup's been a work in progress. He actually has reverse splits if you look at his numbers right he's hitting 290 against some lefties just 192 that's because of the changeup and how good it's become. And if you're wondering why 15 teams passed on him before the Nats got him, the next line down tells you that story. Nationals have a history of going after outstanding young athletes. Some of them need medical attention. Anthony Rendon comes to mind. And they, they draft him, they take care of them, and then when they're healthy, they get him to the major leagues. He was supposed to be the number one pick like Steven Strasburg. His elbow was banged up around the draft. He'd go get Tommy John surgery after his first professional start. But it's been a long road for him. This isn't just, you know, the, the chosen one, and he's right to the big leagues he's learned how to be a good teammate he's learned the finer things of the game how to field his position how to hit how to bunt guys over he spent time in the minor leagues so this isn't just some phenom that shot through the minor leagues he's earned every bit of this start here today and I'm excited for him something about the month of June when it comes to Nationals pitching last year Max Scherzer a no hitter six years ago Steven Strasburg makes his debut Pirates in town an electrifying atmosphere now we knew a lot earlier that he was on the way but here he comes on the mound June 8th of 2010 and you know the Pirates were not a great ball club yet at that point but 14 strikeouts in your major league debut hard to believe what we saw that night. Yeah, I lived up to all the hype. I mean, that's not easy to do. And I really don't see any correlation between Steven Strasburg's debut and Lucas Giolito. I mean, Strasburg was the number one pick. He threw 100. Everyone talking about him. This town needed, as you said last night, Steven Strasburg because the team wasn't very good. Lucas Giolito is pitching for a first place team today. The only correlation I could draw is they both throw really hard and they're both from Southern California. But this is a lot different than what you just showed right there. Yeah, and the personalities of the two quite different. Steven, soft-spoken, reserved. Giolito, very out going of course he has actors in his family why shouldn't he and uh, as far as Giolito goes uh, you know major league debut tonight we'll see how that all goes now Steven Strasburg is on the DL he's done some throwing on the side and had another session today yeah I'll show you the video of his session today I mean it looks good it looks like he's on schedule and you wonder well if he's back what's going to happen with Lucas Giolito I can't answer that question I have no idea I know that Mike Rizzo always says he's going to make the team better however he can he's always looking for ways to improve the team so I don't think this is a one start debut for you know one start shot so to speak for right. Lucas Giolito if he does good he's staying if he doesn't he's going we'll see how this whole thing shakes out but it's good to see Steven Strasburg throwing again. Yeah, and you saw Mike Maddox. You saw Dan Farova, the bullpen coach. What you didn't see was back by the catcher, Nilsson Robledo was catching. Uh, it was Paul Lassard, the Nats trainer. He was in on that session as well. All right, now the pitchers lately getting some offense. It has come alive again now that the ball club's back home. And Ben Revere made a little team history last night. At least four hits, at least three bags stolen, and at least three runs scored in a game. Nobody, no Expo or National had ever done that before. I mean, a great day, and we talked about the numbers and, and what he brings to the ball club as far as on base percentage average throw all that stuff out the window what he brought to the ball club last night was energy and to me that's what a good leadoff hitter does it's you go we go you get on base you start running around it's infectious and you saw everybody last night Bryce Harper run around Jason Worth run around Anthony Rendon stealing bases Joe Ross for crying out loud got started on a hit and run so they were running all over the place and it all started with Ben Revere he kind of set the tone for that game and he did it down four to nothing so I mean a lot of energy from Revere last night and you're looking for more of the same on a consistent basis from Ben and maybe some kudos for Dusty Baker as well you're down four. Ben Revere gets on base 
and then Dusty starts up the running game and that I think rattled Noah Syndergaard and contributed to some of the success in the couple of innings after that. Yeah, If you're down four in the third inning you don't change your game plan at all. We talked about that and Ben Revere is going to run and everybody ran on Noah Syndergaard last night and I'm getting pelted by rain right now and it's awesome. <laughs> Feels good. We feel like the kids running through the sprinkler here at the ballpark right now. We'll have more coming up in a moment. We'll close the windows and have all kinds of entertaining expertise for you. But we have a storm coming through Nationals Park. Not that violent right now, but it's coming down steadily.
So it's cooled off to 75. Humidity still up there, but it doesn't feel anything like it did a couple of hours ago here. We had double rainbows, one still over the right field stands. And here's the Mets lineup. Travis Darno is in the number eight spot. A couple of hits last night. In fact, he had three of them, and he has five hits in his last three ball games. He's a steadying influence for their pitching staff when he's back in there. So Granderson, Cabrera, and Cespedes, the first three hitters Lucas Giolito will face. Well, there you see the double A numbers 14 starts, five and three records, 72 strikeouts in 71 innings. Currently rated by ESPN.com and MLB.com, the number one prospect in Major League Baseball. Last start was on June 22nd against Portland. He received the no decision, went four and two thirds, gave up five runs on seven hits, four walks, three strikeouts. That was the minors. This is the majors. Here we go. Here's the defense behind Lucas Giolito tonight for the Nats. Worth Revere Harper, the outfield. Espinosa Rendon left side. Murphy Zimmerman right side. And Wilson Ramos behind the plate. Also is a good thing to have the number one defense in Major League Baseball behind you. Absolutely. For such a night. That hour rain delay for Lucas Giolito must have seemed like an eternity. Yeah. Well, I think both ball clubs are thankful that the game didn't start and then came the rains and then came the interruptions and then all the things that managers pitching coaches and pitchers have to deal with in a situation like that. So they'll both get a clean start to the ball game, and that's huge for both of them especially our young guy and Anthony Rendon will come over and hand him the baseball. Well I think this is going to be an interesting first pitch for a number of reasons but Curtis Granderson likes to swing at the first pitch and nobody throws anything but a first pitch fastball in their major league debut. So we've seen Granderson go ambush mode and we'll see what he does right now. 17 year veteran Chris Guccione behind the plate. Alfonso Marquez the crew chief. Larry Vanover he's at second. David Rackley. It's eight o'clock and here's Giolito's first pitch fastball up and away. Granderson hitting 222. A couple of hits early last night. 94 to the outer half. Shift is on. And a base hit to left. Curtis Granderson stays on the ball. And for the second straight night, he leads off the ball game with a single. Well, I think the key like anybody's major league debut how soon this turns into just a baseball game Curtis Granderson with a hug to Ryan Zimmerman but you know right now things are going fast it's a blur. You know we've all been there done that and, and the sooner you can turn this into everything you've done your whole life to get here the sooner you just make this another game. As Dribble Cabrera hitting 244 left handed 263 overall. Nets play him on the infield pretty straight up for a left handed hitter. Well, the other key harness and all that energy that nervous energy Dusty said it's OK to be nervous just don't be scared and Lucas Giolito anything but scared. But harness that fire early going to be a challenge. Ramos sitting right on the outside edge. No swing says David Rackley ball two. And also getting ahead to get to that nasty curve ball change up to complement his heater. Up in the zone. Cabrera didn't like it and it's two balls one strike. Probably up and you'd imagine that with adrenaline the challenge is to get it down. Take that first strike though. <laughs> There's a high strike zone right now. <laughs> Cabrera doesn't like it. Chris Guccione does. This is probably the ceiling not where you want your change up ideally. Yeah 85 on the change so a nine mile an hour difference heater to change. 
and it's two and two to Cabrera. Here's the hook. It's a good take. I don't know how he took it. Yeah, and when that ball crossed the plate, it might have been in the lower quadrant, but after a couple of high calls. It might have locked him up is what it might have done. He didn't know where it was going to end up. He's never seen a Giolito curveball before. Now it's three and two, and we'll see if Terry Collins decides to do something with Granderson at first. Doesn't run a whole lot this stage of his career, but he's moving, and it's a foul ball. Inside the numbers brought to you by Jeep. So that's better than a strikeout per inning. Most outstanding major league prospect as recently as two years ago. And he's been to the Futures game twice. That's the Sunday before the All-Star game. It's a top rail kind of start. Everybody on the top rail looking. 3-2 with nobody out. Again, Granderson's shorter lead, not running. Swing and a miss. Strikeout. Number one in the major leagues for Lucas Giolito. And they will authenticate the baseball. He authenticated the fastball, 96 miles an hour, said, here it is, hit it. Some good old-fashioned country hardball in the reach back. It talked about it earlier that 96 plays a little bit more firm. It plays up because he's 6'6". He's throwing downhill. He's on top of you. So you look at 96 on the scoreboard, but what as Drupal Cabrera just saw, probably a little bit harder. And Steven Strasburg with a big smile, he remembers what it feels like. <laughs> so charting the guy replacing him tonight Lucas in the rotation. Lucas charted last night on TV. He did. Cool. From his hotel Is that room. true? Yeah, yeah, he did. Wow. Here's Cespedes. Gashes one to Rendon. Time for a play at first. That ball was really hit hard. Good play, two outs. 112 miles an hour on the scoreboard on the hit speed of that ground ball. So you want to play third in the big leagues? You're watching at home? That hit him going about 112. Nice job of keeping it in front, taking your time, making a good throw. Anthony Rendon has played gold glove third base all season long. That was a good play. So with two outs, it's the left-handed hitting. Neil Walker, second baseman. Switch hitter from the left side, 249, 265 overall. And for the Mets, he's been swinging the bat well, seven for his last 19. First pitch changeup. You got to believe that strikeout loosened him up a little bit. Cespedes retired. I mean, those are little things for a normal pitcher in the first inning, but big things in your major league debut, right? Loosen me up a little bit. Follows it up with 93. That one to the right side. Great play, Murphy. Takes a run away from his former team, and now Lucas can take a deep breath. He got two outstanding infield plays behind him in his first major league inning. He's thinking right now, they didn't make these kind of plays behind me in the minor leagues. Anthony Rendon with a nice stop to get Cespedes, and then Daniel Murphy doing it his own team once again. Nice play.
is Matt Harvey against the Nats offense. Ben Revere leads off and he had a fantastic game here last night. Four hits, three runs, three steals, added an RBI to it. And that set the table for the guys behind him, including Wilson Ramos, who now has 41 RBIs. Loves hitting against the Mets. Look at that, 47 batted in in 57 career games. Harvey overall, 12 starts against the Nats. Three and five with a 2.93 ERA, but it's been a different story this year. Uh, you see the Arsenal fastball averaging 94.4 this year. Slider, curveball change to complement the heater. See the no decision, the Mets 4-3 to three loss at Atlanta last start on the 23rd. Gave up two runs on eight hits over six, struck out three, walked nobody through 91 pitches in that one. Ball one to Ben Revere. Now hitting 314 his last 16 games. 2 0. Oh. Harvey 69 strikeouts in 85 innings, extraordinarily low total by his standards for his career. 22 walks. He's been hittable, 288 opponents' batting average. And Revere, a little late there on 2 0. Early game notes for you. Nats keep coming from behind, top five in all of baseball. So there's the Revere 314, and he's done well against the Mets. Matt Harvey, not that great at Nationals Park, the ERA. Bad. That's on the inside edge, and the count's even 2 2. So it'll be Jason Worth next. He has five career hits against Harvey, like Revere does. And we'll see if Bryce Harper can start doing some damage against this guy. Got him. Harvey working the extreme first base side of the pitching rubber FP, and he put that fastball right to that side of the plate. Well, there's some run back in that, some front hip action. Strike two and strike three. And strike three a little bit more on the border than strike two, but good pitch by Matt Harvey. Nissan tracking a pretty good fastball combo there. And here's Jason Worth, five for 23 career against Harvey with three walks. Matt has struck him out 11 times. Big month of June. Several days to go before the holiday weekend. Look at Lucas, my by the way, 14 pitches, 10 strikes, first inning. His eyeball on Matt Harvey right there. Did you <laughs> see that? Well hit by Worth. It is foul into the left field corner. Ball in the air a long time, and it gave it time to hook. That's defense tonight behind Matt Harvey, Nimmo, Cespedes, Granders in the outfield, Cabrera, Flores, left side, Walker, Loney, right side, and Travis Darno behind the plate. A nice night last night. Yeah, good to see him back and playing. Such a good catcher. Concussions have gotten him, shoulder problems to shut him down in April after just two weeks. 2 1 pitch. That's to the outside edge, and Harvey has command of the heater so far. <laughs> Worth's batting eye has been amazing lately. He had two quality walks in the first three innings last night. Bryce Harper going to break the jinx right now. One for 24 career against Harvey. 3 2 with one out. Harvey's slider coming out firm here early. It averages 88 miles an hour on the season, but everyone he's thrown here has been 90 plus. It's tight, it's late, it's short. Looks like it's tough to pick up, almost like a cutter. It usually has a little more tilt than you've seen here early. Worth hanging tough on a couple of pitches now.
crowd liking it. So pitch number nine in this at bat coming. And Worth will get the base on balls. What a good at bat. That'll put Harvey off the stretch for Bryce Harper. Bryce had a tough night last night. Swung the bat well, was on base, running all over the place, but he banged himself up. You see the foul ball off the top of his ankle there. And I think, was it the other foot that had the weird landing at first base? Yeah, it was the left foot and the roll of the ankle. So the ankle is not a good night for Bryce Harper. Neither one. He had a good night. Ankles, not so much. So to start the game tonight, right lower leg protected. Bryce has an RBI career against Harvey. And that's inside. Three bases on balls. Harper now 288 his last 21 games. And he's been on base in 19 of those. Darno jumps outside. Talking to Jason in the clubhouse today about him trying to sneak home last night and James Loney catching him. He said that would have been the greatest play ever if I made it. But he was kind of bummed that he didn't. I said, hey, the way you guys played last night, that was fun to watch, man. You guys all were run to the tag, you playing out of your unis, everybody dirty. Ben Revere leading the way. It was fun to watch, and he agreed. It's a fun brand of baseball when you see a ball club running all over the bases. A lot of people, when you think of baseball and making it fun again, think of home runs. I think of running the bases. I'd love to see a ball club all over the place on the bases. Right side could be two. And a 4 6 3 turned by Walker and Cabrera. So Murphy, who's homered twice against Harvey, will have to wait an inning. No score after one. Mike Maddox, the Nationals pitching coach, has prepared a lot of young pitchers for their big league debuts. And I asked Mike earlier today what his approach was leading into today's ball game with Lucas Giolito. He said his main thing that he wanted to get across to Giolito was just, I want to keep you at ease. He says it's important to reinforce to young pitchers that the game hasn't changed a bit. You do what you want to do, good things will happen regardless of the level you're pitching at. As far as scouting reports go, Maddox says he planned to keep things very basic with Lucas. He didn't want to throw too much at him. He said, Execute. That's your game plan. Execute. We'll do the thinking as far as himself and Wilson Ramos and determining how best to get out the Mets hitters. You go out there, you execute this game plan that we're giving for you, and if you do what you want, you're going to have results. Two hard hit balls, first inning, one hit, one strikeout. That's Dan with our Coons.com sideline report. Over two million vehicles sold and counting. James Loney against Giolito. Well, that's a good pitching coach trying to keep it simple for his young pitcher. 
And I think the fact that he was in spring training, he's already faced the Mets. That was his one start in spring training. I think he went a couple innings and he told Dusty Baker he could give him nine. <laughs> but knowing your teammates when you come in the clubhouse is such a big deal as a young player and a prospect when you get to know them in spring training it's not overwhelming. They're not these big mythical features if, uh, guys that you see on TV figures the word I'm trying to look for they're just guys now because you know them. So that's the comfort level that he'll have here whereas if he didn't go to spring training it might be a little more intimidating. Yeah none of the out of those 14 starts pretty good. Loney hits one to right center Bryce Harper trekking it four outs in a row after the Granderson base hit so a strikeout two grounders and now a fly Wilmer Flores and Brandon Nimmo the next two I'm looking at Lucas's pitch counts in the minor leagues 98 98 106 103 100 I think the big question is going to be here tonight there's some rain moving in and what do they do if there's a big delay yeah. That would be a huge buzz kill, by the way. Wilmer Flores is hitting 319 since the Mets moved him to third base 25 days ago. So his batting average at 248. And we're good. That's for now. a look down to the south. One one. Flores kind of close to the trademark following that one off. To the left side. This one a little softer than the first one to Rendon. And the Nats are playing solidly behind their rookie pitcher. Now it'll be rookie, rookie, each in their first few days in the big leagues. Nimmo playing his third game, and he'll face Giolito here. Brandon Nimmo from Cheyenne, Wyoming. First two big league hits here last night. A flare to right center in the second, then an infield hit third base line in the third. So he's two for eight as a major league hitter. Mets are averaging 2.6 runs of support. In Matt Harvey starts this season. That's the second lowest total for any qualified starter in the National League. They haven't gotten Matt Harvey any runs. A ball to left. Here comes Worth. Hangs up for Jason. He's got it. And now Giolito has retired six in a row. On to do ups. It's Daniel Murphy. And what he's done lately, more of what he did earlier. He's back on top in multi hit games. 100 base hits on the year.
It's Matt Harvey this year. Thursday, May 19th at New York, first inning. Worth had walked with one out and with two outs, Murphy. That was his sixth of the year. And then here at Nationals Park, Tuesday, the 24th of May, one out, fifth inning, a two run shot, part of a Nationals three run inning. So they beat Harvey nine to one there, seven to four here. And Murphy steps in against him, two for four with those two homers, four batted in and a base on balls. You think a team that's struggling offensively misses a guy hitting 350 leading the National League? I'd say with a team batting average of 234 and brutal with runners in scoring position, yes and yes. And Neil Walker's done a fine job. I mean, he's a good ball player at second base. Murphy's just had a fantastic start to the season. Travis Darno will catch that. And now it's Ramos and Zimmerman, the next two. Inside the numbers on Harvey, brought to you by Jeep. So first eight times the ERA under a run per game. Last four, over eight and a half a game. Hitting almost double what they did in those first eight. Walks, hits per innings pitched, doubling as well. But he's been good so far here. A few of those first eight were before Tommy John surgery. Yeah. And those last four have been since he's been thinking a lot, let's put it that way, on the mound. Ramos gashes one to center. Came in hitting 341, only nine points behind Daniel Murphy. Nats have a base runner with one out. Well, if you haven't had a chance to see Wilson Ramos play this year, you missed a lot because he's been swinging it. Striking out a lot less, hitting the ball on the nose the majority of the time, and there goes the no-hitter Buffalo style here in the bottom of the second. Nice swing. Ryan Zimmerman, six career hits, hits against Harvey, couple of home runs, three RBIs. Took Harvey deep here last time he faced him. On May 24th, when Matt Harvey gave up five runs on eight hits over five. And Zimmerman got him with one out in the fourth. Then Rendon went back to back, and then the aforementioned Murphy home run one inning later. Then the Nats had two more against the Mets bullpen later that night. Ryan. Nine of his last 20 hits extra bases. Inside and Darno fighting that ball. Kind of handcuffed him with some arm side run. It might give you a good idea of how much Harvey's fastball is moving around tonight. Travis Darno, good receiver, couldn't handle that. Eighty four on the hook two two. A lot of guys wiping their brows tonight. You already saw the thirty three on Harvey's back sweat soaking through the numbers here early. Mets in their blue tops tonight. The starting pitcher gets to decide what tops they wear and Harvey likes the blue. Two two with one out. Zimmerman can't catch up with ninety six two down. Matt Harvey's second strikeout. And now Anthony Rendon. Five for his last 11. Two of those hits, followed by a sack fly in the middle of the game last night. Gave the Nationals three runs, and then he scored twice himself. Against Harvey, good numbers, six for 17. This one to the gap in right center. 
going to roll to the wall. Here comes Ramos. Bob Henley's going to send him. The throw home is wide, and the Buffalo scores. Rendon drives him in. He's on third. The Nationals lead 1-0. I'll tell you what, once that ball got over Granderson's head, whether Wilson Ramos was scoring was dependent on how this ball kicks off the wall. Watch it check up short. And now he has to go in and get it, that extra half step or so that Granderson has to reach in and get the baseball when you have a below average runner like Wilson Ramos allowed him to score. It's the only thing I'm looking for. Does that ball kick off the wall to Granderson or does it sit tight? It sat tight and that's why Bob Henley sent Wilson Ramos and you still see how close it is at home plate. So if Granderson doesn't have to take that extra step, go in and get that ball, Ramos is out. That was the difference in that play. And stay hot, Anthony Rendon. He's locked in. Here's Espinosa. Will they pitch to him with two outs? Yeah, they will. Strike one. Anthony Rendon, RBI number 30. He's now six for his last 12. Another big night for Danny last night, the number eight hole. And this is another example card. Whatever happens here, I'm not pitching this guy. I'm making the pitcher beat me, especially in his first major they got bad. I mean, he might strike him out, but we've seen so many teams take chances with Danny Espinosa in this exact situation, and he's come through. He's burned him. But I also think that because he strikes out a lot, that's the tease for the opponent. Exactly. Do I go after him? Do I not go after him? But with 13 home runs, in my opinion, he's the most dangerous eighth place hitter in the National League. 0-2 oh, now. That was a triple, by the way, for Rendon, his second of the year. Espinoza fights one off and hits it out of play left side. Nationals in this series now have 19 hits, and that's only their fourth extra base hit. Target away, Danny will reach out and stay alive again. So Harvey up to 30 pitches. Giolito's at 23, his first two innings. Lucas on deck. So for the last month hitting almost 280 slugging great 10 of his 13 home runs 23 of his 33 runs scored he's driven in 34 this year including 11 his last 17 games good batting eye 2 2 yeah, that's the same pitch that Ben Revere struck out on and I think the way Danny Espinosa took this pitch versus the way Ben Revere did was the difference in strike three maybe a little bit more inside but he kind of sold the call with the way he took it Mercedes Benz on the pitch track Ball three. So they're pitching tough to Espinosa with a pitcher on deck who had a grand total of nine minor league at bats. Darno stands up now. And now they maybe want to talk about whether to just put him on. I, I mean, why wouldn't you? They might strike him out, it might work for him. He might ground out, fly out, not get a hit. But the fact that they're flirting with this, to me, I mean, maybe it's because we get to see Danny Espinosa play every day. I'm never taking a chance with yeah. this guy. Like you said, he's got nine at-bats. This is a no-brainer for me. 
I know it's early in the game, but to me it doesn't matter if it's the second inning or the seventh inning. You walk Danny Espinosa every single time and twice on Sunday in this situation. And the other thing, what if you bury a breaking ball and it gets away? True. A lot of bad things can happen. Three and two. Danny Espinosa, one of the most disciplined bats he's ever had. And he's aboard with two outs for Lucas Giolito in the minor leagues 0 for 9 two sacrifice bunts just for the fun of it. His batting stats. Second walk by Harvey. Great speed at both corners. Crowd digging ball one. <laughs> Somebody's saying, look how big he is. If he could just get a hold of one here. But he's facing Matt Harvey. That was rather tardy on 96. Talking to Lucas's mom today, she said obviously she's nervous, but she just hoped that Lucas got a hit. Well, if he gets one here, it's going to be a big one. So it's one and two. Outfield shallow. Now Darno looking into the dugout again. This may be if Espinosa starts running. He ain't going nowhere. Yeah, you wouldn't want him gunned down and then starting the inning with Giolito leading off. Giolito gets a piece of it to the right side, race to the bag. And having to hit a moving target, Neil Walker to Matt Harvey. The highlight of the inning, Rendon's triple. But at the tail end, the speed, the slide, the emotion, and pretty soon, the oxygen for Wilson Ramos. with two scoreless innings under his belt so far. Wilson Ramos told me earlier today that he was pulling into the players parking lot at about 2 p.m. this afternoon and saw Lucas Giolito there 
little surprised to see a pitcher that early showing up to the ballpark on a day that he pitched. Wilson kind of smiled and said, I know he's amped up. I know he wants to be at the ballpark and just be around a big league stadium. So he understood that. I talked to Max Scherzer as well about Giolito and what he saw being around the big right hander in spring training. Max said that he picked up from Lucas that he knows what he doesn't know. He asks lots of questions. He wants to learn. And Max noted that it's incredibly rare that a starter comes up and dominates from the get-go. He says even the best starters get hit around early on in their big league careers. It's a process. But he was really impressed with the fact that Lucas Giolito knew what he needed to learn in spring training, was asking tons of questions, and really was there to soak up as much information as he could. He's got a lot of good guys on this staff that he can pick up tips from. He hung around with Steven Strasburg and played golf with him in spring. He worked out with Joe Ross a lot, and the two of them became pretty close. So Lucas trying to just pick up as much info as he can from these national starters in spring training. Max was really taken by that. Well, I like a guy who knows what D.C. traffic is all about and did not take any chances yeah. on getting to the ballpark. So that's Dan with our Coons.com sideline report. Over two million vehicles sold. And counting. Here's Travis Darno, top of the third. So far for Giolito, 23 pitches, 17 strikes. Darno, Harvey, and Granderson. There's no such thing as too early in your major league debut. No <laughs> such thing. You just sit around your hotel room and go nuts all day. Watch your phone blow up with text messages or get to your comfort zone with all your boys. Rendon waiting for that one. Seven straight for Giolito. With Matt Harvey coming in. Oh, he's supposed to be the number one pick in the draft. He sprained a ligament in his elbow, dropped to the 16th pick, and the Nats said all along if he's there when we pick, we take him. No brainer. Yeah. And I like that he's sitting at 93 94. There's always that chance that in your big league debut you punch yourself out early you go too fast. Too soon and then you get to the fourth inning and you have nothing. Right to Ryan Zimmerman. First time through the order the Mets go one for nine. And that's the fifth ground ball out. How about that 27 pitches first time through. And Granderson now. Didn't hit the ball very hard but he dumped a single in the left field first time up. One man on the left side Anthony Rendon. Murphy 20 feet out into right field on the shift. Change up from Giolito early is a lot better than I anticipated. It's pretty good. Yeah, we didn't hear much about it, did we? No, oh, just fastball curve and the change up is something he's been working on. He'll cut the fastball, little two seam run at times, but mostly a four seamer straight over the top. Ominous clouds approaching the park from the west to saw. I think a little bit of lightning up in those clouds to the northwest. Yeah, it's getting ready. And he misses by a wide margin. Four pitch walk to Granderson. Breaks a string of eight consecutive batters retired. Next up as Drupal Cabrera. Who didn't like a couple of high strike calls during. His at bat and then eventually struck out swinging on a good heater. And this one high in the air to right. At 843, a little bit of twilight out there, but Bryce has it. And Giolito is through three, having given up only a base hit and a walk.
those handsome dudes. Seriously. Which one are you, Carp? I'm, I'm going, I don't know, well, whatever. First 25,000 I'm fans. the not the oldest one. That's, <laughs> that's me. That's Park. They get a special Rat Pack poster. Plus, the select golden ticket winners will receive a special surprise giveaway. I think we signed the surprise giveaway today. Visit nationals.com slash Rat Pack night. It'll yeah, be a think, fun night at the yard. I think there will be 100, like, golden tickets, and they get autographed yeah. copies. We were fighting off the irresistible urge of sending you out for drinks. Yeah, I'm, I'm down. I'm always down. Here's Ben Revere. Struck out looking first time as Harvey painted the inside edge right under his hands. Nats lead 1 0 on the Rendon triple after the Ramos base hit. Inside. Now you see the game plan against Ben Revere tonight. Matt Harvey's pounded him in. Struck him out first time with some run back fastballs. He's going right back to the well second time. Yeah, Ben went up the middle twice for hits last night, once to left. This time sharply hit. Neil Walker for the first out. Next five will take us through three. Well, make it four games against the Reds. Tomorrow night, now Steven Matz has been scratched. Logan Verrett will start against Max Scherzer. Then the Reds are in for four. See the special 6 o'clock starting time Friday. Back to 7 o'clock Saturday, 1.30 Sunday. Yeah, more bad news for the Mets pitching staff. Steven Matz unable to make his start tomorrow. Here's Jason Wirth walking first time. In the dirt on a slider 1 1. Harvey first two innings 38 pitches 24 strikes. Nats had four of their first nine batters get on base. So the lineup turned over quickly. And here's worth taking a good fastball 97. Run right on the black outside edge. Tried to paint there again. Chris Guccione stood up and the right arm stayed at his side. That one was a four seamer. The pitch before that was a two seamer that ran back. He just tried to clip that outside corner and just missed it. That was close. 2 2. Jason Work now, now has 30 walks on the year. Seen a lot of pitches too lately. 13 total tonight so far. He's going to be called out. Maybe he couldn't react to this curveball, they're calling it, as this was inside corner. Nissan tracks it. Yeah, locked him up, everything away in the sequence, everything else firm, and then a kind of a backup curveball for yeah. the strike three. Good pitch. There's Bryce. Bryce Sack fly 0 for 3 against Harvey last time here. His one career RBI against the right hander. Dark clouds rolling in, grounds crew near the tarp over on the first base side. And the 0-2 to Harper. 
High in the air, left center. Cespedes over and under it. And a 1 2 3 third against the top of the order for Matt Harvey. Giolito back to work. He's been great. The Nats lead by one. of Nationals Baseball brought to you by the RAV4 Hybrid All-Wheel Drive and unexpected performance. Visit buyatoyota.com tonight. Tom Seifert's here. I just saw him walking on the concourse. You see that? Bryce Harper, Denard Spans here. I came a long way for this one. Yeah, we have a veritable all-star team here. Hall of Famers. Top of the fourth, Cespedes Walker Loney. Lucas Giolito threw three innings, 32 pitches, 21 strikes. One hit, one walk, both by Granderson. You liking what you're seeing so far? I yeah, am. Love it. You know, and you, you can't really say he's pitching to contact. He's throwing strikes. They're making some contact, but he's thus getting some quicker outs. And look at the Inning totals now nine and nine his last two frames. He's under control and that's what I'm liking most so far. He's not out there in closer mode from the get go all yeah. amped out of his head and, and you kind of had a feeling knowing the kid known him for a while that he wouldn't be phased by this moment. You know but Epi, how many times you see a young pitcher comes up after three innings he's got four strikeouts and three walks and he's up around 50 60 pitches Giolito under control. Now Cespedes did gash it first time. Yoannis turns away from that one a fastball not far off his left elbow. Three balls in the air five ground ball outs. One strikeout. Three and zero. Oh. And then look out here. It's got to be all systems go if he sees something down the middle. Cespedes is sixth in the league with 18 home runs. Low and away. So four pitch walks to two of the last three hitters. Follow Nats. Baseball live. It's the MLB.com at bat app. So you've got game day live game video highlights and stat cast download MLB.com at bat it's the number one app for live baseball on either your phone your tablet or both. Here's Neil Walker. Stretch might be the thing for Lucas right now I've seen a few pitches in the wind up where he's out of sync he's not repeating his mechanics he's getting a little bit quick and now you simplify things it's almost like a two strike approach where you spread out and choke up. Because he's got a lot going on. I mean, Mike Maddox knows that. When it was wind up, you're six foot six. There's a lot of parts that have to be on time. But now, out of the stretch, there's less parts that have to be on time. You saw that 3 0 pitch to Cespedes. He was all out of whack.
One one. 79 for the swing and miss. Well, here's a good example of the curveball from Lucas Giolito. The best one he's thrown tonight. Watch this one. 12 6. Off a table. See him getting on top. The spin rate right over the top. Look at the spin on that curveball. All right. That was pretty good. How about another one? A pickoff play on it first. Did you see Ramos hop up? A lot of heaters, 83%. One and two. When the ball game started at eight o'clock straight up, flags were active blowing in from right field. They are not doing a thing right now. Big crowd, major league debut, Nats on top. And a one and two with nobody out. Cespedes medium lead. And Walker a fly ball to left center. Coming back to Jason Worth. He gets rid of it in a hurry and that freezes Cespedes and sends him back. Big out. You know that's where the off outfielder helps. When you're going for a baseball and you're looking at the ball you don't know if a guy's tagging up. So what's your job as the off outfielder. To tell him what's going on. So right now, Ben Revere's running over there saying he's tagging, he's tagging, he's tagging, and Worth gets rid of it quick. And Cespedes, who ran about five steps to second base, got rid of it so quick he went back. Jason got rid of it, and that's all Ben Revere right there. Give him a star for running over there and doing something productive. That was nice. Yeah, great call. Loney, fly ball to right first time. Big time lightning appearing, but it was well beyond the capital to the north. That ball hit hard, slicing, and about four to five feet foul. I like it. The crowd's getting revved up on two strikes here. O2 with one out. Bouncing ball, Espinoza. Murphy, the relay. Got them both. 6 4 3. And Giolito is through four with one base hit. Good stretch on the end. That was a difference. Look at Zimmerman coming off the bag. Nice turn by Murphy. You saw his parents. They were fired up.
debut, and there's one woman here who's super excited about that. That's his mother, Lindsay Frost. Lindsay, Luke, this has been a long progression for your son, even though he's just 21 years old. What are the emotions that you feel today as he takes the mound for the first time in a big league uniform? Uh, it's overwhelming. I, there are no words, really. There are no words. It's like one of those moments in life that you want to soak it all up because you don't want to forget it. You always want to remember it. and. It's just going to go by so fast, and we were all so nervous, and it happened very quickly. So, in one way, we didn't have a time to, to really process it, you know, before we were here. So, it's been great. It's been great. Everyone talks about Lucas's poise as Daniel Murphy singles through the right side. Murph. Where, where does that poise and that uh, composure come from at such a young age, do you think? You know, I don't, I don't know. He always had it. He was always very mature. Uh, he was always all right in front of a crowd. He was never shy. He just had a lot of confidence. And um, I think that, you know, he, he, I was telling people all day today, you know, I was getting so many texts and messages and people, and I said, you know, when he was in fifth grade, he said, you know, when they had the little yearbooks, what are we going to be when we grow up? Major League ball player. Like, there was never any doubt. And so I think he just has that kind of confidence about it and it, and it was it's a great thing it's been fun to watch it's been fun to watch for us too congratulations and enjoy the rest of it thank you very much guys back to you ball well hit right center from Ramos and it is caught at the base of the wall by Granderson that sends Murphy back to first as Wilson Ramos came close to an extra base hit ball and carrying tonight yeah airs thick I thought that was out of here and that's what he does best. Fastballs in. He thought he got it. We've seen Wilson Ramos watch home runs. It's kind of what he does. And this one fooled me. It fooled him. From Curtis Granderson with a nice running catch on the track. Lucas is probably rooting for this one. Get up. His mom, Lindsay, you just saw, she watches every Nats game. She watches us every single night. She has since Lucas was drafted. So she knows as much about this ball club as anybody out there. She's been a fan from day one. Here's Zimmerman. Her dad, Warren Frost, a frequent cast member on Seinfeld. So, a couple of generations of actors and actresses there. Does he know Keith Hernandez? Well, you know, Keith is known for that now. Nobody knows he played <laughs> baseball anymore. <laughs> he does hair commercials and he was on Seinfeld. That's enough for most Americans. Ryan Zimmerman struck out swinging first time, but it's 2 0. Oh. Dad Rick there on the right with the red hat and the glasses, brothers in the middle. Working the phones. A great family. Huh? The pleasure of knowing them for the last three or four years or so. And it's not real surprising that Lucas turned out how he did. 2 0 oh pitch. Flag starting to move a little here. We had him up in the booth a couple of years ago. He was fantastic on TV. Murphy running pitch inside. Murph is out. Perfect throw by Travis Darno. Larry Van over there to punch him out, and Murphy didn't signal the dugout or stand there. He runs away. Murph is the kind of guy that'll give you the headphones immediately. He looks safe to me, but based on Murphy's reaction, I'm thinking he's out. I mean, he's a guy that'll show you exactly how he's feeling all the time. He tried to ambush Harvey right here, and it looked like the tag got him on the shin before his foot hit. I mean, you don't even need replay half the time. Just watch the players' reactions. Most of the time, they're absolutely 100% correct. Body language will tell you all you need to know. Strike to Zimmerman. I thought Murph had a good jump and Darno just made a fantastic great throw. throw. Great throw right on the money. So there's Zimmerman walking. Second base runner of the inning and that's Matt Harvey's third walk tonight. Anthony Rendon raindrops coming. Now this is an interesting situation. The Nats have the lead three outs in the top of the fifth. It becomes an official ball game, and then it's up to the weather how the rest of the night goes. Fans are starting to head up. Flags are blowing now fairly stiffly toward the right field corner. 
I was just hoping those flags had stayed limp for another 15 minutes or so. Here's Rendon. His triple two innings ago, the difference in the game. Two out walk is big because now you're facing the hottest Nats hitter, in my opinion. That ball off the gear of Travis Dorno. One ball, one strike. Harvey slider way better than the last two times we saw him this year. It's short, it's late, it's playing like a cutter, and he's got good command of it. Fastball command could be better. He'd probably tell you that himself, but the slider tonight he's got to be pleased with. That's the best we've seen him throw this year, no doubt about it, against the Nats. Two outs, one one to Rendon. Crowding the plate. Target in. Ball way in, two and one. The Nats lead the season series four to three now. They've split the four games here. And since the start of 2012, the Nationals are now 22 games over 500 against the Mets. 2 1 with two outs. Rendon drills another one. Falling, falling on the ground. Zimmerman to third. And Danny Espinosa will bat here in the fourth inning. Rendon two for two. Danny had three hits last night. Hey, like I said, he's been doing a great job out of the eighth slot. You see what he did to Noah Syndergaard last night. That was on a two strike pitch. He tried to bunt a couple of times, then he laced a bullet to right. This one, same way. That scored Anthony Rendon. And then how about one right handed down the left field line for a couple of bases. So a nice night for Danny Espinosa, and all of a sudden the skies are open up here in Nats Park. Yeah, and uh, we've seen ball clubs in the field in situations like this not exactly get in a hurry with weather approaching and now arriving. Mets know how close this is to being an official ball game. They're going to pitch to Espinosa who takes a fast ball up. If you're confident in throwing strikes and you're Matt Harvey there's no reason to face Danny Espinosa right now. Oh, and they're calling the tarp out. Well, that's too bad. Because based on how long this takes, you hope it doesn't keep Lucas Giolito from having a chance for a win. So the rain hits at 908. Now we are delayed. Well, I think this is a good move. I mean, there's some nasty thunderstorms moving in, and you don't want to try to get a tarp art in the middle of a thunderstorm. Be kind of preventative measures right now. Because then the field's not playable. So right now they're getting the tarp out, hustling up before the winds and the thunder and lightning and everything hits. It's going to get bad. So Lucas Giolito threw four innings, is at 45 pitches, which is fantastic. 29 strikes. So it's really coming down. And the crew chief Larry Vanover second base umpire made that call. Browns crew gets the this is pretty this is pretty good. I was looking at my laptop here. When the grounds crew touched the tarp. It just turned 909 and when they covered the infield a moment ago it had just turned 910. They did it in a minute. They got one piece of the home plate circle to get covered. Now they just did. Well, let's look at Lucas Giolito's night. Some key in the driver's seat. Ran out to a nice ovation. Came in from the bullpen to a nice ovation. Anthony Rendon saying, hey, it's just a ball game. Throw strikes. You'll be all right. And that's exactly what he did. First strikeout on a 96 mile an hour fastball. Daniel Murphy picking him up big time. That's a huge play in a one nothing game. There was a runner on third. 
And then a little 6-4-3 double play. Nice stretch by Zimmerman. Nice turn by Daniel Murphy. So all in all, you have to like what you've seen from the young right-hander for the Nats. Well, we're going to send you to ESPN News right now as we have our second delay of the night. The first one delayed the ball game, the start of the game, for exactly 55 minutes. This one happens at 9.08, and we will keep our eyes on everything for you, radar, etc. And for now, that's it from the ballpark. See you a little bit later.
It's a shame. But Lucas Giolito opened a lot of ice tonight, and I'm so impressed, FP, by the fact that he threw 45 pitches in four innings, two thirds of them strikes, seven ground ball outs, and uh, you know one one strikeout, not blowing guys away, and he gave up one flare of a hit to left field. You know what it was? It was a professional outing. It wasn't yeah. like, wow, oh my goodness, there's 15 strikeouts. Look at this guy, and you, you kind of almost like it better that way because now the the expectations haven't been built so high for his next start. He went out there, he controlled his nerves, he left with a lead, he did what he had to do, he let his defense work behind him. So all in all, a really solid one to build on for next time for Lucas Giolito and when is next time I have no idea. But impressed with the demeanor the mound presence and how he handled himself more than anything he threw to home plate. So here's Eric Goodell who takes over for the Mets. He will inherit a two on two out situation. Goodell made an appearance for two innings last night. Nats got a run on three hits against him as he pitched the sixth and the seventh, walked one, struck out one. Alejandro Deaza takes over in right field, and uh, it'll take a moment for us to figure out whether it's a double switch or not. We'll let you know where he's batting. So at third base is Ryan Zimmerman. He walked with one out during his at bat Murphy was caught stealing. So then Ryan gets the base on balls. Anthony Rendon dropped a base hit into right field. And Danny Espinosa was just walking into the batter's box when the weather broke loose and then Clint Robinson now comes out to hit for Lucas Giolito. Got all that. Not even close. I'm still pounding coffee trying to wake up. Danny Espinosa, 0 for 3 career against Goodell. So the rain stopped the ball game at 9.08, and we're going to have the next pitch at 10.33, and he almost threw it away. Good take, just missed. Matt Harvey, by the way, goes three and two thirds, four hits, three walks. Three strikeouts and he's responsible for both men on base. Throw over Rendon back in. And a 2 0 pitch now coming. And Espinosa takes it outside 3 and 0. Why not? He's been swinging it. I'll go green light right here. See what Dusty Baker decides to do. Run into one, make it a 4 nothing game. It's up in the zone 3 and 1. Nats about hit the Mets 4 1. And the count goes full, which will give Anthony Rendon a head start at first base shortly. Field looks like it's in really good shape. Ground screw got the infield cover in a minute after the heavy rain started. Most of the work it seems was done on the warning tracks as well as getting the water off the tarp. So quite playable out there. Payoff pitch to Danny Espinosa Rendon moving Espinosa fouls it straight back. Since we last played the Marlins game at Detroit has gone final Tigers seven. Miami five so right now the Marlins and the Mets are four games back of the Nats. Three two again. 
Espinoza takes it and the bases are loaded. And here comes Clint Robinson. Fourth walk issued by the Mets tonight. Danny Espinoza's eyeballs have been fantastic this year. His walk rate way up. Another walk, two tonight on base again. Keep messing around like this, you might be leading off sometime. <laughs> Terry Collins is going situational in the fourth inning. Now that Robinson's been announced as the pinch hitter. Situational. One nothing game, fourth inning. race sometime between 8 45 and 9 o'clock this evening and everybody just kind of what standing around I don't see anybody right now George is going to stop them onward they got the army fatigues on tonight and the commander in chief the first ever is going to lead them all to victory yes sir we salute you Former Nat 32 year old Jerry Blevins takes over here. And for the Mets, his 34th appearance, 177 ERA. Fastball, curveball change, 34th game for Blevins. Fastball average in 88 miles an hour. 205 average against. A lot of fly balls at 58% of the time. And a huge situation in this game, so let's go 0 to 60 together. Sure. So. Not surprising that Robinson has never faced Blevins, but this early in the ball game, there's no way Dusty's going to pinch hit for Robinson and use two players here. This is huge. Two outs, bases loaded, one nothing game against the second place ball club. And Clint swings at the first pitch and flies it to Nemo, rather Nimmo in left field, and Brandon Nimmo has it. That's it for the Nats. They strand three. Boy, that was a long fourth inning.
We all wanted to see him pitch at least five innings and have a chance for that win, but things in baseball don't always work out, or shall I say, seldom work out the way you expect. So the fifth inning is underway. Lucas can now spectate and enjoy Joe Ross, Gio, and Steven Strasburg and watch Yusmiro Petit in a role he knows so well take over. 31 year old right hander. Making his 20th appearance with the Nats, a 293 ERA. A fastball slider curveball change, four pitch guy, fastball average in 89. Usually stays away from right handed hitters. Wilmer Flores bouncing ball to third, first time up. One of Giolito's seven ground ball outs. And this one back out of play. Fifth inning underway. I would imagine there's a huge sense of relief for Lucas Giolito. You know, all the buildup in the last day or so, the nerves today coming to the ballpark, the rain delay for an hour before he takes the mound. And now he could sit there with the rest of the rotation and relax a little bit. He knows he did a nice job tonight. You've talked about this before. What does it feel like when you know, either as a pitcher or a position player, that your game plays at the big league level, at least for one night? I mean, it's, you work at it your whole life, and there's always that mystery. Does my stuff play at the big league level? Can I play there? You know you can. You think you can, but until you actually go do it, mm -hmm. there's always that little doubt in the back of your head. So I would say after facing the Mets tonight, he's got to feel good about himself. And we hope we get to see him another time. Flores one for four career with a double against Yusmero Petit, and that's a foul ball, one and two. They're having fun. Tanner Roark behind him. Kind of reliving it, isn't he? Saying that one ball went through and what he was thinking. And they're probably sharing stories about their feet. Yeah. first big league game back and forth. I remember my first big league start. I did this. I was nervous. I mean, that's good stuff right there. Strasburg, Gio, Giolito, Ross, Tanner Roark in the background. And Max has probably already gone home or been sent home for his start tomorrow night. They'd probably have to send him home because he'd want to stay. Right? Yeah. If we know Max. Pretty good at bat by Wilmer Flores. Mercedes Benz tracking it everything away. Some down, some middle, some up. Outfield around to the right. So he's pitching him the way they're defensing him. And that's low and away, three and two. <laughs> Up the middle. Might have gone right between Yusmero's spikes, and the ball found its way to Daniel Murphy. College rivalry day, we'll tell you about it one more time, okay? Tomorrow night, Hokies, Wahoos, second annual. And with the purchase of a special ticket, enjoy pregame activities, talk a little smack, get a reusable Nats acrylic cup in your school colors. Then it's the Nats and the Mets at 7.05 with Scherzer pitching. Visit nationals.com slash college rivalry day. Give everybody a boost tomorrow night, put some spirit in the ballpark. Ball one to Brandon Nimmo. So you have both bands from both schools on the field before the game doing their thing. <laughs> now that would be pageantry as they say in college football. Good fastball to the inside edge. Brandon Nimmo a couple of hours ago only at bat fly ball to Worth. Foul tip. And the count's one and two.
Well hit to left. Brandon Nimmo with a clean line drive. That's only the second Mets hit tonight. He's aboard with one out for Travis Darno. Nice swing right there. Pretty swing. And I know nothing about Brandon Nimmo. I'm just going to say he's a tough kid. Just because he's probably had to endure all the Nemo jokes throughout his life. <laughs> well, and they don't get to play baseball up every, every part of the year in Cheyenne, Wyoming, either. Um, I'm sure maybe he did a lot of traveling as a high schooler. Rope and steer, wrestling cattle, climbing mountains, climbing mountains, riding horses. It's an amazing part of the country out there, but we just don't hear of many ball players from the Dakotas or Wyoming Frontier or Idaho. Days. Yeah. Travis Darno bouncing ball to Rendon first time up. He's 0 for 2 career against Petit. And Yuzmiro drops in there a slider for a strike. Jerry Blevins on deck. They made a straight up switch with Deaza replacing Granderson in right field. That one up a little bit. Outside. There's nothing better than having an, a really long rain delay. Everybody leaves and you can hear every single rag in the stands when you come back. Because <laughs> you can't hear it when there's 40,000 people because it's just a big buzz. But right. now you can hear everything everybody says and it just makes you want to, I guess, have headphones on is a nice way to say it. And as we know, the ones who do stick around tend to be a little more vocal. They're lubed up. They've been pounding brews the whole rain delay. And some of them get to sit in seats they've never seen before, yeah. which adds to the fun. <laughs> Three balls, one strike. I'm telling you, it stinks as a player. There's a ball out to left. Jason Worth is under it in front of the track. As that piece said earlier tonight, we could tell from the get go, you're going to have to really hit one to get one out of here because the air's been heavy. So here's Jerry Blevins. First at bat this year. I don't remember seeing him hit as a nap. Maybe he did. I don't remember it. It's got the classic closed stance. He had no at bats for the Nationals in 2014. For his career, he is 0 for 1. Oh, all right. And ironically, that happened when he was in Oakland A playing interleague ball back in 13. 1 1. He looks like he knows what he's doing. Got the team misses. He got it. He get that part down. He's watching it. Nice. Yeah, Yusmero still a little bit searching for his command here in his first inning of work. Ground ball, base hit, fly ball. Gone to a couple of long counts. And the bat ends up on the front of the mound. Jerry's holding about one fourth of it. And the barrel went out toward the pitcher <laughs> as he. Threw the bat head at the baseball. If you knew Jerry Blevins, you have to laugh at that. I mean, he's just the most lighthearted guy in the world. We loved him when he was here. <laughs> and I'm going to stick with it. He knows what he's doing. It's a good swing. I mean, hey, we've all been there before. See him front hip opening up a little too soon. Eye on the ball. Yeah, he was watching the ball, not the bat. It's not a bad hack. Now it's two and two. Runner goes, swinging a chopper. It hits up to Ramos on one hop foul ball. And back to first, Brandon Nimmo. 
kind of shocked that Nimmo went right there, but. Yeah, if he gets thrown out, you have a reliever leading off the yeah. next inning. There's really no percentage in stealing, but hey. 2-2. Two -two. Levins hits it well, one hopper, Danny Espinosa. Ball had some velocity. And the ball game is halfway over. It's now an official game. Revere, Worth, and Harper ahead, bottom five. Podcast is presented by Authority of the Washington Nationals and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the expressed written consent of the Washington Nationals. Well, they don't need any more hoses on the infield tonight. As we go to the bottom of the fifth inning, let's check out our Freight Rail Works do-up. Ben Revere against the Mets, very strong. Jason Worth, June, very good. Bryce Harper, probably glad Matt Harvey's done. He just can't get a hit against Matt. One for 26 career, one of the great mysteries. But those are the do-ups here in the bottom of the fifth inning. Ben has struck out looking and then been out on a hard hit ball to the right side. Revere, three for 12 career against Jerry Blevins. He gets the outer half with a strike. One pitch to get Clint Robinson last inning. Now another left handed batter for Jerry. That ball into right. And cruising to it, Alejandro Deaza. Next up, Jason Worth. By the way, Lucas is uh, old ball club. Harrisburg had an interesting game over in Bowie tonight. They won 13 to 10, and Wilmer Defoe drove in seven runs. It's a good month. It is. <laughs> Here's Worth, a walk and a strikeout. Facing Blevins once in his career and has a base hit. Mets fans are quiet, aren't they? Just Is it possible to be quietly obnoxious? They just sit around and watch baseball and study the game. Don't really say a whole lot. They're good fans, they really are. You just can hear them.
I mean, it's so hard as a player when you're fired up for a big game. It's Matt Harvey, Lucas Giolito. All of a sudden it rains. You're sitting around for a long time, and then you just got to rev up again. It's not the easiest thing in the world. It really isn't to get that flow, that rhythm of the game, that momentum back that you had. Outside two and one. Bryce waiting. He's faced his former teammate three times. Outfield pretty straight away. 3 1 to Worth. In there. Counts full. Nissan will track it low in the zone. Well, he was looking for something belt tie. You get to a 3 1 count, you're not going to swing at a borderline pitch. I mean, it's a good take. It's a strike, but that's a ground ball waiting to happen. He's looking for something a little more center cut and a little higher. Now he's aboard and Jason Worth has been walked by the Mets or shall we say he has earned four walks in this series yeah, and seen 21 pitches tonight in three at bats. So the Nats have now been given five walks this evening. Only one out Harper and Murphy the next two Bryce 0 for 2 with a walk against Jerry Blevins. A game at City Field when they walked 11 times this year, when they were up there last time. The Nets beat the Mets seven to one on Wednesday, May 18th. Bartolo Colon walked five, Bastardo one, Verrett two, Blevins two. Jim Henderson won. Yeah, that was a snowball fight in New York for sure. Yeah, more walks than strikeouts that night by the Mets staff. The Nats added eight hits and that added up to a 7 1 win. And for Gio Gonzalez, he was 3 and 1 after that game. Hansel Robles. Terry is one reliever short because Logan Verrett's going to start tomorrow night. 1 1 to Harper. There it goes to right field. See you later into the bullpen. Number 16 for Bryce, and the Nats lead 3 0. Lefty versus lefty, no problem. Jose Lobatone taking the helmet off. Hugs and high fives in the Nats dugout. Jonathan Papelbon has his shades on at night. Bryce usually hits them high. Rarely does he hit a low line drive home run. That was a missile out of a cannon, if there's such a thing. Now Murphy, he gets jammed. That ball over to the left side, cut off by Wilmer Flores, two down. That had the sound, didn't it? That was loud. See it again, Bryce Harper with a 16th. Fastball from Jerry Blevins, catches it out front. Gets that top hand working, and that's what he talks about all the time, really working that top hand on top of the baseball. That time he did just that, a low screamer into the Nats bullpen. Three fingers for the big hit. Yeah, Sammy Solis couldn't catch that one. No, he's taking his hand with it. Here's Ramos, he almost doubled off the scoreboard last time. Base hit first time. Wilson Ramos 0 for 1 career against a former battery mate. And the curveball from Jerry Blevins stays outside.
Another one, same result, 2-0. Oh. A dangerous count to a dangerous hitter. Remember his last at bat, he had a deep fly ball to right. He thought it was out, he watched it for a second. So he's hit the ball hard twice tonight. Single his first time up, deep fly ball second time. They all geared up on 2-0 and, and he got the off speed at 83. That ball meshed to center. In fact, the pitcher was ducking on that. And it was caught by Cespedes. Wilson Ramos has crushed it three times tonight. But Bryce Harper, he was due to crush one. After the walk, there it goes. And the Nets, after five innings, lead 3 0. home run three to nothing Nats Washington DC Lexus Steelers donating 250 bucks to the children's national health system for every home run a Nats player hits this season so keep them coming it's for a wonderful cause Lexus the pursuit of perfection and this swing's pretty perfect fastball center cut low home run for Bryce Harper you don't see the low line drive home runs off of Bryce's bat usually they're high majestic real far that one got out of here in a second. Yusmero Petit, the pitcher of record, top of the order. Alejandro De Aza against him. He hits one high in the air out to left center where Ben Revere will camp under it and take it for the first out. Curtis Granderson, the only Met before the fifth inning to get on base. First inning hit to left, a third inning walk. Cespedes walk leading off the fourth. He was erased on a Giolito double play. Final pitch Lucas threw in the fourth. Then a base hit last inning by Brandon Nimmo. Cabrera and Cespedes now the next two. There's a swing Bryce took off Gil Martin last night. We just came out of his shoes. He swung and missed it. That ball hammered down the right field line. And Cabrera has it picked up by Bryce, gets it back in. One out double, sixth inning. And just like that, Joanna Cespedes coming up. 
16th double of the year for Cabrera. First career hit against Petit, and now Cespedes faces him. 0 for 1 with a walk. But that swing I'm talking about, you know, I took a mental note of it because it was the old Bryce Harper swing. It was the violent swing with balance. And we always marveled at him last year how hard he swung. But he, when he was done with his swing, he was standing right where he started. And even though he swung at that pitch and missed it by a mile, it was one of the first times in about a month and a half I saw that swing from 2015. Mm -hmm. And you just saw it again right there on his home run. Just great to see Bryce centering some balls now. So three hits in the series. 1 0 to Cespedes. Good pitch, 88 to the inside edge. And the count's even 1 1. Yoannis 0 for 1 tonight. Hit a rocket to Rendon that Anthony knocked down in the first inning. Then he walked in the fourth. Two one left side Espinosa for a moment Danny thought he might have a play at third pretty wet on that grass he was sliding out there infield hit for Cespedes first and third one out well he saved the run and now if Ismero get a ground ball you're out of the inning so nice play by Espinosa to save a run good swing by Cespedes but looked like he was thinking about going to first thought better of it. Next up, Neil Walker. Now the Nats getting their bullpen going. Oliver Perez just popped up, and he is playing catch very quickly. I always wondered if pitchers knew when a pitching coach was coming out just to stall. You know, I'm sure Mike Maddox had something really good to say to his Merrill Petit. But hey, get a ground ball right here. We're out of this. But. Everybody else knows that was to get the yeah. Oliver Perez loose. I'm pretty sure those guys know. Neil Walker hot shot to Murphy fly ball to left. Sounds like we're having college rivalry night one night early here. Let's go Mets and then the Nats fans boo them down. Walker has driven in 31 runs. Two and oh. Ball three. Well, you're thinking A heads up on a green light here by a guy with some pop, and B, it would be Oliver Perez versus James Loney if the inning continues. Walker, three for eight career against Gismero. Four pitch walk. Nats thought he had the outside edge. Bases loaded, one out. So here comes Dusty. Yasmero Petit will fail to go two innings. He'll get an inning and a third here. And it's the lefty Loney and the lefty Perez coming up. So the Nats 3 0 lead in jeopardy.
Loaded one on Oliver Perez on. The fan challenge is back, and we want you to challenge Max Scherzer to anything. <laughs> That's scary. Can you beat him in video games or ping pong? Tweet your challenge using hashtags I challenge Max. He'll pick a winner to face off in a head to head competition. Ah, I see. Brought to you by Care First Blue Cross Blue Shield. Live fearless with the name trusted for over 75 years. Very interesting. 34 year old Oliver Perez. 32nd appearance, 25 Ks, 8 walks in 19 innings, 17 hits. James Loney is 4 for 13 career against him with a solo home run, 2 walks, but Oliver has struck him out 4 times. So they know each other. Loney 0 for 2 tonight, fly ball to right, 6 4 3 double play ball. And he couldn't stop his swing on a big sweeping curve. A drop down slider 78 biggest slider I've ever seen Frisbee Yeah, 86 percent efficiency. Another stat always important for relievers. First batter retired. One one with one out here. And that time Loney not biting. Well, they started off watching a guy 21. Now they're watching a pitcher 34. That's in there. Well, Wilson Ramos going to go talk to Oliver Perez. Maybe they want to switch up the signs here. A couple of good sliders from Perez. Three nothing Nationals top of the sixth inning. Two hours and 25 minutes worth of rain delays tonight. Swing and a miss. Boy it's so tough for lefties when he's got that hook in his hip pocket and that's the second out here in the sixth. So he dropped a couple of sliders in there for strikes and then with two strikes he drops down even further. And Loney can't stay in there. So nice pitch expanded the zone with the slider beauty. Wilmer Flores 0 for 1 career against Oliver Perez. Who spent five years of his career as a Met. That's in there. Cutting its way to the inside edge. Then he tried to buzz the inside with a fastball. In the air to center. Ben Revere is there. Bases loaded, one out, and Oliver Perez shuts the door. Mets are hitting 207 with runners in scoring position this year. That's the lowest in baseball, and I had to wait until they made the third out to tell you that. Lucas Giolito approves.
into the bottom of the sixth inning. Celebrate the first weekend series of the summer when the Reds visit Nance Park June 30th through July 3rd. Join us for Ladies Night on Thursday. Post Game Freedom Fireworks on Friday. Rat Pack Night where you get a Bob Carpenter autograph poster. You pick up a Ho Herbert Hoover. Bobblehead on Sunday. Visit nationals.com for your Hoover Hoover Haba bobblehead. And for all of you tuned in late at night, I understood every syllable whether you did or not. Yes, nailed that. So Hanso Robles gets the call. 25 year old right hander, 34th appearance for the Mets. 44 Ks in 36 innings. He'll walk a few, 16 on the year. And Kelly Johnson takes over at third. Terry Collins has one non catcher left in his dugout, and that's infielder Matt Reynolds. So this figures to be a double switch. Johnson would bat third in the top of the seventh. Ryan Zimmerman leads off, career 0 for 3 against this right hander. Ryan tonight a strikeout and a base on balls. Breaking ball catches the front corner of the plate on its way to the outer part. So Jerry Blevins a very costly walk ahead of the Harper home run. He pitches an inning and a third. So Matt Reynolds and their backup catcher Renee Rivera they only have a four man bench because Terry Collins carrying an eight man bullpen has Zimmerman with a fly ball that will push into the corner Deaza and on the move grabs it right in front of the 335 mark. Well he was ready right there for Hansel Robles a guy who quick pitches with two strikes he tried to sneak it by Ryan and put a good swing on it. Anthony Rendon, two hits tonight. Yeah, Tony two bags went Tony three bags his first time up. That scored Wilson Ramos all the way from first. And you see that ball staying close to the wall. That enabled Ramos to barely beat the throw. It was a nice relay by the Mets, but because Curtis Granders had to go in, pick up that baseball, allowed Ramos to score. Anthony Rendon hits another ball hard. Deaza, though, waiting for it. Two outs. With more on Danny, here's Dan. Bob, we've talked about Danny Espinosa's power this season. He also came into today with an on-base percentage just under 400 in June. I asked Dusty Baker how big that is out of the eight spot. He says it's huge because he's rolling the lineup over. Innings where the number eight hitter makes the last out, it means the starting pitcher early in the game is leading off the next frame. Dusty says that might force me to pinch hit for my starting pitcher earlier than I might want to, especially if we're trailing. So when a guy in that number eight spot is getting on base or driving in runs, it means a lot to a manager. Two walks tonight. And the first walk did turn over the lineup in the second. It got Lucas Giolito to the plate. Because, in essence, the next inning's a two out inning, yep. basically. So you, you already count the pitcher as an out, and no offense, Nats pitchers can hit, but you know, that's the theory behind turning the lineup over. If you have the pitcher leading off the next inning, it's an easier inning for whoever's pitching against you. Yeah. And as we've talked about earlier, a couple weeks ago don't even think about comparing a number eight hitter in the American League to yeah. one in the National League. Yeah, he's got a batter hitting behind him a, a real one. No offense to the pitchers again is crushing all the starting pitchers right now. But it's true. Nets box. Ramos one out single second inning Rendon tripled him home. Murphy had a hit in the fourth his one hundred and first. But then the big sequence the worth walk one out fifth inning and then Bryce took Jerry Blevins into the bullpen to put the Nationals up by three and by the way Sammy Solis is out there throwing. Espinosa big time hack right there. So Heisey on deck if the inning continues. So a big time shutdown by the left hander who will proceed. Sammy. Eight pitches, five strikes for Oliver Perez. I right, watch a quick pitch here with two strikes. Oh. 
And I'm watching here again with two strikes. You remember, Robles did it to Zimmerman. Might have been last year, and Ryan wasn't too happy about it. He was ready for it this time, just didn't get to hit the drop. Three and two. Danny Espinosa has 26 walks this year. So his on base percentage is over 330 now. Time given. That is not a stat we used to associate with Danny Espinosa, no. but we are now. There he goes again. Three walks tonight. Danny Espinosa on base for the sixth time in this series. You know how you get out of the eighth slot? You do exactly what Danny Espinosa is doing, and a manager will find a way to get you in a different place in the order. I mean, you walk, you get hits. We, we know about the power and the taters, but you start getting on base consistently, a manager can look at that and say, hey, I could use that guy in another spot in the order. Even though he's valuable in the eighth spot, you know, Espinosa can run. He might find himself hitting higher here. I don't know where or when, but he keeps doing what he's doing. That's how you get out of jail, so to speak. And a lot of hitters call the eighth spot jail. Yeah, so right now his on base percentage about 30 points higher this year than his career coming in. It's better than the 10th spot. <laughs> Chris Heisey now. That's in the dirt. So the Mets, the only team against whom Danny Espinosa has walked three times in a game. Five years ago and then again tonight. So you guys look out in the year 2021. He's going to do it again. He might do it a few more times this year. Well, when you talk about it, Carp, I think he's learning how to hit eighth, meaning Take your walks when they're there. Don't expand the zone. I know he was frustrated in April because he had never really hit there consistently, but you know, he's learning the craft, so to speak, of hitting in that position. If you're going to walk me, I'm going to take my walks. You're not going to get three, two fastballs. So he's learning as he goes what teams are going to do to him in certain counts yeah. and in certain situations. 2 0. High Z taking all the way. Two one pitch a lot of room up the middle. Heisey as a rule a pull hitter lays off and now it's three and one. To the top of the order in a moment Ben Revere. See if Dusty starts Danny Espinosa here in a three one count. Doesn't wait till it gets to three two. It's a good count to run on especially pinch hitter. He's going to be all systems go right here. Maybe you're betting on a gapper to score him from first. Let's see. Fast ball to the inside edge. Robles real quick to the plate. <laughs> Off and running. Is Espinosa and Heisey called out on strikes. So the previous pitch inside edge, that one outside edge. Into the seventh now, 3 0 Washington.
nine coming up. Not only in innings, but for the Mets. Let's have a look at the bullpen. Last eight ball games, ERA under a run and a half, and the opponent is hitting under 260, keeping it in the yard, not walking guys, and uh, they continue to retain that outstanding strikeout to walk ratio. I mean, that's better than outstanding. It's borderline incredible. Oh, you look at a big reason why and Sammy Solis. There's the arsenal fastball average in 94 curveball 80 occasional change up at 85 86 21st appearance. Look at the ERA 146. An opponent hitting just 153 off the Nets left hander out of the bullpen. Brandon Nimmo sees Sammy Solis for the first time. He's gone the other way twice fly ball to left in the second and then a hard hit line drive with one out fifth inning. Two and zero. Oh. Yeah, and Sammy right in the middle of all that with a. One four six ER eight this year in 20 appearances. Just one out under 25 innings that's right in there. Sammy Solis does what I think every reliever in baseball should do get it and throw it. He has a tremendous work rate. Doesn't mess around. Give me a sign. Let's do this. Out to short Danny Espinosa scoops and fires. <laughs> Potomac Nationals still at the fits. They continue a three game series tomorrow night against the Winston Salem Dash. So look for two dollar hot dogs. General admission tickets on the 28th. Summer camp daycare day on the 29th. So the $2 hot dogs were tonight. Sorry. To join the party at the Fitz, 703 590 2311 or PotomacNationals.com. Yesterday was National Sunglasses Day, not today. But in Jonathan Papelbon's world, it's 75 and sunny every single day, no matter what time it is. Good look. Solis on the comebacker. Hot one hopper from Travis Darno. Two outs. Kelly Johnson next. So Lee and Johnson matching for the first time. That's perfect to the outside edge. <laughs> Dusty and Mike Maddox can't look around too long between pitches. Two and one. There's certain guys when you're playing defense that work too fast. You might be looking around a little bit, checking out the scenery, and all of a sudden you hear the glove pop. You're like, ooh, I better lock in. 12.9 seconds between pitches. That's great. That ball rocked into right field. For the Mets, their fifth base hit tonight. Top of the order, Alejandro Deaz. I guess some of the Mets guys were talking earlier that Curtis Granderson was having a hard time getting loose out of the second rain delay. He's 35 years of age, and they got Alejandro out there to replace him. Fly ball to center his first time up. Prior to the Mets putting three men aboard against you, Yasmero Petit, and then the sequence of the night for the bullpen was Perez striking out Loney and getting Flores to fly out. End of threat.
Diaz has started his career with the Marlins back in 07. White Sox for parts of five years and then some time with the Orioles Boston. Picked up by the Mets on waivers. And also some time down the stretch with the Giants last year. One ball two strikes with two outs. So took a little bit off and he gets a fly ball to left. It backs up worth. That's it for the Mets. In the seventh inning. And how about the seventh inning stretch at 1137 p.m. We all need it. on Masson brought to you by Airlines for America where airplanes land opportunity takes off and by Navy Federal Credit Union proudly serving the armed forces and their families for over 80 years federally insured by NCUA. Yeah street lights have been on for quite a while. There's my Uber driver right there that one right and there. he just picked up somebody else I'm afraid in, in the creepy van. <laughs> We're going bottom seven with the top of the order. Hansel Robles still in there. Nats trying to win the series tonight. And then you've got Max Scherzer set to go tomorrow night. Let's go inside some numbers with Jeep here. So the Cubs unbelievable run differential. They were on an crazy 400 plus pace there for a while that wouldn't last but the Nats are second five over St. Louis the Giants the Dodgers on that list all brought to you by Jeep all that matters is outscoring your opponents the bottom line there are different ways to get there and it's kind of interesting that in this series the Nats have done it with singles doubles one triple and one home run. Cubs just scored to go ahead of the Reds 3 2 in the 15th inning. Ben Revere strikeout, ground out, fly ball. One for two career against Hansel Robles. And that fastball is upstairs. Paul Hart is last time up to right field. Yeah. On the grass at third, Kelly Johnson.
And Ben Revere, another one out of play to the left side. The, it, the way Robles kind of drops and drives, it almost has the illusion of his fastball rising. You're seeing the ball kind of start at the top of the zone and go up out of it. It's because of his delivery. Guy got to really look for the lower half of the zone, zone down guy. One, two, and Revere rips it to left. Nimmo going back and waiting. One out, bottom seven. So did you see the quick pitch right there with two strikes? Second time he's done, he did to Ryan Zimmer. Now Ben Revere, watch. Well, you can't see right there. But his delivery just didn't really come set. And watch. There you go. Got to be ready. Everything at the top of the zone. Jason Worth 0 for 1 on base twice with walks. A run scored. Strike call even though he leaned back. Well, quite a low liner out of the ballpark to right field last time for Bryce Harper. He wasn't ready. You know, one of these half innings, we're just going to let the fans call the action. <laughs> hey, I'm, I'm so up for that. <laughs> Worth a swing and a miss. Two down. Second K by Robles. Uh, how about what Bryce did last time? It was the first home run that Jerry Blevins has given up to a lefty since August of 2013. It was Prince Fielder who hit it. So Blevins not used to giving up taters to lefties, and this one got out of here in a minute. Well, a second, because a minute it would have been a lot higher. Hit speed 106, 396. And I got to find out what that's all about. Fireworks Ooh. show, maybe? Fourth of July coming? Harper rips another one. This one shorter. And over in the corner, Deaza can't get it. And Bryce will pull into second with another extra base hit. So six total bases for Harper tonight. Starting to drive the ball. Well, the way Bryce has been getting robbed lately, I bet you he half thought this was going to get caught. Didn't square it up like he did the last one, but Diaz had a beat on it, and you thought he was going to dive and catch it. Bryce Harper still gets a two-out double. Nice swing. So things kind of change. You see the balance in the last two swings dating back to last night. Bryce Harper has figured something out. And that's a good thing if you're Dusty Baker in the Nats. Here's Murphy. They're going to walk him and go righty righty with Wilson Ramos. It'll be Robles second walk. So the first time these ex teammates see each other one gets walked. See that they tried to pick off Bryce at second base. Robles is full of tricks. Watch this. Quick pitches to home and watch this. Bryce looking down. Ah, ah. Got back easily. Gotta get your heart rate going. And now ball four to Murphy. Wilson Ramos. 0 for 2 career against Robles. Robles saw Bryce looking down <laughs> and decided he was going to pick him off. I'm sorry, I just think this is funny. Bryce, heads up, back. I bet you Bob Henley had something to do with that. He probably screaming 
his lungs out right yeah. there. And with nobody here at the ballpark, Bryce heard him. It's a good thing he was only one step off of the bag. <laughs> That's a heads up play by Robles. You got to give him some. You saw Bryce looking down. Wilson it Ramos, an unlucky one for three. Line drive up the middle. Ball driven to the gap, caught up against the scoreboard, and then an absolute laser right at Cespedes in center last time up. Leonard's getting big leads inside to Ramos. Darno sliding to his left. Ramos to center. This ball hit a ton at the base of the wall. Harper scores. Here comes Murphy and Wilson Ramos, who should be an all star, makes it a five nothing game. Forty three RBIs. Can you hit the ball better four times in one night? Well, he just has such a distinct sound whenever he squares one up in the hanging slider from Robles. Drilled the center field and the Buffalo just turned a three run lead into a five run lead. You can't walk somebody to get to a Buffalo. He's going to make you pay every time. Two horns up. Absolutely. If you're still up, go to your computer and vote for Wilson Ramos. Now to do to proves. Ryan Zimmerman next. First batter Robles faced to start last inning. And he gets unlucky. That ball was labeled for center field, and Robles is down. Deflected off of him to Neil Walker on a 1 4 3. Got him on the leg, it appears. Ryan Zimmerman walks over near the mound to check on an opponent. Classy move. They're going to help Robles to his feet. It's a classy move by Ryan. Unlucky not to get a hit. We hope Robles is okay, and the Nats certainly are. Five run lead. Perez right all kinds of traffic out there on the bases they're loaded with one out he gets James Loney on the third slider he would throw him and then Wilmer Flores to pop up and before that the Mets were hitting 207 with runners in scoring position you got to figure that went down a little bit that's the lowest in baseball by a lot 
Wilson Ramos coming through again. Getting ready to catch a second inning by Sammy Solis here. And a fastball that just misses to Asdrubal Cabrera. Cabrera, the double that got that would be rally going last time. Counts even 1 1. That whole sequence with Wilson and Murph and Bryce, that could have been the Nats three All Stars all in a row there, right? Yeah. I mean, you never know who's going to be selected as a pitcher. But Bryce with the double, Murphy with the intentional walk, and then the Buffalo with the double. They all should be all stars. And Terry Collins is managing, so he just witnessed it all. Swing and a miss on a curveball in the dirt. Sammy Solis has retired four of the five Mets he's faced. Time for Toyota case for kids. Well, it's past time, but we'll just read it right now. The Washington area Toyota dealers want to help children and their families by making a $37 donation to the Children's Inn at NIH for every K by a Nats pitcher this season. Cespedes, one for two. Hit the ball hard twice, so walk in between. Oh, for one against Sammy. He leaves nothing in the bag. One one on a big swing. Nah, I don't get cheated. Big power zone. <laughs> you don't see a lot of right handed batters with a power zone down and in like that. Good low ball hitter. Good bad ball hitter. Fastball up, and it's two and one. What do you say? He doesn't have as much accessories since the last time we visited the Mets. 2-2. Two, two. I mean, this will be out of play. The neon sleeve. He had a bunch of wrist bracelets on. He had a neon necklace. Yeah. Then he had an elbow guard that had a big 52 on it. So he's downsizing as the season goes on. They try and play a little lighter. Still got great numbers, having a great year. And this one in the air to right. Bryce Harper coming in. Two outs in the eighth. Spend this summer here at the ballpark with us. A summer saver pack gets you one game free when you buy three regular season games. Some restrictions do apply. Visit nationals.com slash summer for all the details. Strike one to Neil Walker. I was keeping my scorecard all neat to give to Lucas after the game. And then I forgot about it during the rain delay, and it's just awful the second half. So I apologize to Lucas in advance. I forgot. Boy, is that going to ruin his night or what? I'm sure yours is pristine like it always is. No, I did get rain on it. I'm good. But I've just gone straight slop here the last three innings. I'm tighten it up. My bad. One and two to Walker. Sammy Solis keeps getting outs. Murphy under this one. 
to the bottom of the eighth. Seven, eight, nine coming up for the Nationals who lead by five. Base dugout broke out into a Giolito, and the guys in the dugout were kind of clapping along with the fans. I think they wanted a Lucas Giolito curtain call. It's pretty cool, actually. The fans that stuck around cheering for Lucas. He's going to enjoy every moment of this until the last out's made. Addison Reed is on the mound for the Mets here. Twenty seven year old right hander. And for the Mets it's his thirty eighth appearance two fifty seven the ERA. Forty K's in thirty five innings. A fastball throws seventy eight percent of the time averages ninety two slider. Touches a change up every once in a while. Fastball has a little cut action to it. Anthony Rendon, another good night, two for three. And against Addison Rito for four career. Midnight at the ballpark. Worth every second to get a series win here and to have witnessed what we saw from Lucas Giolito earlier. And we're in tomorrow with you because we're on the West Coast, so we'll same day rule. Swing and a miss, and that's the out. Wednesday night, it's Max Scherzer. Eight and five. Three and three career against the Mets, 138 strikeouts, second in all of baseball. And we'll have Nat Sexter for you starting at 6:30, as always. First pitch, 7:05. Had a possible sweep in the offing. Still got three outs to get. No jinx rule. Logan Verrett and he has stepped out of the bullpen when needed to make some starts for them this year. It'll be his fifth start 21st appearance. One one to Danny. Then he'll get jammed and followed away. <laughs> Mike 
Nationals getting good bullpen work tonight. Steven Drew on deck to hit for Sammy Solis. One hit, no runs, one strikeout in two innings. I don't know that I've ever seen Screech in his pajamas, but he's got his PJs on. <laughs> he's ready for bed, folks. He is not nocturnal. And they are all ready for him. Hanging with the mascot late at night. There's another strikeout by Addison Reed, two down. I didn't know they made PJs for Eagles, but I mean, it looks good on him. Here's Steven Drew. <laughs> Screech is a character, isn't he, Bob? You're right, he is a character. Yep. Drew 0 for 2 career against Reed. Both former Diamondbacks, but did not play together. So either Joe Kelly, pardon me, Sean Kelly, or Matt Belisle to finish things off here. Maybe Sean up just in case they get a couple of runners. No, Stephen Drew having a fine year, 240 overall. Four pinch hits, three of those home runs, producing five RBIs. And a one two. That ball hit hard. One hopper, Neil Walker. To the ninth. To the ninth. It's taken until tomorrow to do it. And it's all Nats, 5-0. What a night for Lucas Giolito on your right. How about in between innings just now? Isn't that great? Yeah. The guys were getting into it on the bench, too. Look, you can see the hands kind of sticking up over the dugout. Jose Lobaton was clapping along. <laughs> Gio is chatting next to him. Tell him, hey, they want a curtain call. Having fun with the new guy. I like it. Sean Kelly, non safe situation, hasn't worked in a while. 32nd appearance, ERA 260, 40 strikeouts, just six walks. Opponents hitting 194 against the fastball slider combination. Fastball low to mid 90s. A tense inning and a third Sunday in Milwaukee to get his third save. The son of factor. 
on a triple by VR and then a, finally that game ending fly ball caught by Jason Worth. Infielder Matt Reynolds on deck to hit for the pitcher. And this one rolling down the first base side and going foul. You know, I always have crazy rule changes, right? Uh oh. Yeah. I feel like if a pitcher leaves a game after four innings and it's a rain delay, and he can't come back because the rain delay is too long and he leaves with the lead that he should get the win because he was the most effective pitcher and he has no control over the weather and that should be a new scorekeeping rule just saying I think you judges no thumbs down yeah. I mean why not he had no control over the weather tonight he was the most yeah. effective pitcher in this game besides Sammy Solis just saying I don't know I think you should meet with the commissioner's staff in New York and take all of your ideas up there the next time the Nats play the Mets. This might be the most realistic of your proposals no, so far. I kind of like it. Due actually. to weather. That's it. I mean if you go for and the, the manager yanks you because you're starting to lose it and you leave with the lead. You know it's about the team winning and not you. No sorry. But if the tarps on the field and there's a rain delay that kicks you out of the game basically because it's too long you should get the win. Just saying. I mean, it's not up there with my only 10 throw over rule or the catcher can only go out to the mound three times during a game. I do think this realistic proposal will be heard by those that you came up with before it. You know the visits to the mound and the yeah. throwovers and all that stuff because you you'd have been ejected from the commissioner's office about three or four times already and if you take more but than if you keep coming back. No I think you make a point. Well it's about time. Yeah after three innings maybe not but no. after four you're on four, the verge of a win four innings rain delay on the verge of a win you had no control over the thunderstorm you get a win. And. Yeah, Harvey gets the loss and he only went four innings tonight if it stays like this. Yeah. Yeah, he only gave up one run. It's genius. Harvey, by the way, will be four and ten unless there's a Mets miracle here. Reynolds couldn't stop. Marquez says it's a strike and the count's two and two. Oh, the other one was three foul balls with two strikes and you're out. You got no shot on that one. Yeah, I should have not mentioned that. One. Strike three call. Perfect pitch. Chris Guccione thought about it for a second. Reynolds didn't like it. Two outs in the ninth. Now you've been sitting here as long as everybody has you know as a hitter in a five nothing game that the strike zone might get a little bit bigger late pretty good frame by Wilson Ramos and a great pitch by Sean Kelly that was paint. And for the Mets it's Brandon Nimmo the rookie. Well. In one out. Look who would suddenly have a three game winning streak after all the adversity. Just a few days ago. Nimmo one for three tonight. Johnny Holiday Ray Knight hanging out all night long. Perfect fastball by Sean Kelly and the Nats are a strike away.
O2 in the dirt. Crowd of 29,918 paid tonight. And a one, two. Hot shot right side. Hey, Ryan Zimmerman, give Lucas Giolito the game ball. Murphy takes care of business. So does the Nats bullpen. And at 12.13 a.m., the victory is in the books. And the Nats have won 46 games this year. Well, if he doesn't get the win, which he probably won't, he's got a lot to look forward to. He'll have his share of major league wins. And that's 16 unanswered runs by the Nats after the Mets went up 4 to nothing yesterday. So a nice win and a nice series win. Go for the sweep tomorrow. There's Lucas. He stands a little taller than most of his teammates. In fact, all of them. What a night.